Welcome back to the series, An Introduction to 2D Materials. My name is Martin, and I'm a researcher in the field of 2D materials. In the last video, we had an overview of the history and mean field derivation of charge density waves in 1D. In this video, we will go over the Fermi surface nesting criterion. The reason why I quickly skipped through the derivation in the last video is due to the fact that the assumption used in the 1D thought experiment does not hold in 2D. The assumption we used, as we discussed in the derivation, is called the Fermi surface nesting. The nesting condition has been used to explain the cause of charge density waves or to predict its existence in some materials, but as we will discuss, this quickly breaks down in the higher dimensions. For a long time, Fermi surface nesting was the smoking gun for charge density waves. It made sense in 1D, where the phonon momentum Q equals to 2kf showed strong reduction in the phonon energy, resulting in a static distortion of the crystal. This singularity in the phonon dispersion is called the cone anomaly and is a signature of lattice distortions, especially in charge density wave systems. Cone anomaly goes hand in hand with the divergence of the Lindhardt function. The real part of the Lindhardt response function, which tells you about the screening, diverges at the nesting vectors of an ideal 1D chain of atoms. As you deviate away from the ideal case, the discontinuity reduces. The Q equals to 2KF condition is called the Fermi surface nesting condition, or simply the nesting condition. It refers to the translational invariance of the Q equals to 2KF vector in highly anisotropic systems such as 1D metals. The Fermi surface of a 1D metal, such as that of the Pyrrhus thought experiment, is a pair of parallel planes. As you can see, the Fermi vector connecting the Fermi levels of the system can be infinitely defined between the two perfectly parallel planes. You can slide the Fermi vector and they would still connect the two Fermi levels. This is called the perfect nesting condition. Now, let's consider a quasi-one-dimensional material, such as niobium triselenide. Niobium triselenide is a quasi-one-dimensional material, so instead of having a chain of atoms forming a metal, it is a quasi-one-dimensional crystal with van der Waals gap in two of the three dimensions with a finite width. A quasi-one-dimensional crystal, such as niobium triselenide, shows a pair of distorted planes as the Fermi surface with finite dispersion. Perfect nesting is not possible, but partial nesting of Fermi vectors can still be seen. On the right, there is a calculation of the Fermi surface of niobium triselenide, which shows the predicted Fermi surfaces and thus shows the possibility to host partial nesting vectors. The charge density wave state in quasi-one-dimensional systems has been an active area of research until the 1990s and produced many interesting observations. Since the nesting picture somewhat works in 1D, it was thought that charge density wave in 1D was successfully explained by the Fermi surface nesting. Here are some experimental works that show the charge density wave transitions in niobium triselenide. The normal to charge density wave transitions can be seen in niobium triselenide through R versus T measurements. There is a linear decrease in resistance, perhaps this is expected from the Luttinger liquid theory, and at around 150 Kelvin and 50 Kelvin, charge density wave transitions can be observed as kinks in the resistance. On the right are scanning tunneling micrographs of niobium triselenide at several temperatures below and above the second charge density wave transition temperature. As the temperature is lowered, the charge density wave on the surface of niobium triselenide becomes more pronounced. The partial nesting picture somewhat works in quasi 1D, but what about 2D? Well, the simplest depiction of a Fermi surface of a 2D material is a cylinder. In a cylinder, there are hardly any Fermi vectors that can nest. So, will we ever see charge density waves in 2D materials? The answer is yes. As we've seen in the previous video, we see a lot of different 2D materials such as blue molybdenum bronze, tantalum disulfide, tantalum diselenide, and niobium diselenide. 
But how is that possible? Well, it turns out that the Fermi surface nesting picture fails in 2D and 3D and is an unreliable predictor of charge density waves in general, as argued by most of the recent works on this topic. Many 2D and 3D systems display charge density waves, and yet, according to the Fermi surface nesting criterion, they shouldn't have the charge density wave state. One of the predictors of charge density wave is the discontinuity of the Lintard function at q equals to 2kf. In an ideal 1D chain of atoms, it looks like a divergence, and in 2D, it is an undefined slope. Let's take a look at niobium diselenide. Unlike its sister, niobium triselenide, a quasi-one-dimensional material, niobium diselenide is a 2D material with a well-pronounced charge density wave state below around 30 Kelvin. And it is a superconducting material below around 7 Kelvin. The picture on the right shows the Fermi surface, which looks circular as predicted for 2D material. There are hardly any places for nesting vectors to live. But nonetheless, let's assume that there is a nesting vector and take a look at the dielectric response function. Unlike the prediction from the Lindhardt function, there doesn't seem to be any discontinuities anywhere along the momentum axis. Despite the absence of nesting vectors, charge density waves can be seen in many 2D materials. Here are a few that are commercially available. Among these, tantalum disulfide and tantalum diselenide are archetypal systems which show pronounced charge density wave transitions. In particular, this 1T phase of tantalum disulfide has several transitions including the incommensurate charge density wave, nearly commensurate charge density wave, and commensurate charge density wave. These terms will be explained later. These transitions can be seen quite readily in R versus T measurements in this material, as each transition is associated with an enormous change in resistance and some hysteresis in the temperature cycles. Overall, 1T tantalum disulfide is one of the unusual materials where the material behaves like a band insulator at low temperatures. This system also hosts mod-like insulator state at intermediate temperatures and has been a quantum spin liquid candidate for several years now. In other archetypal charge density wave systems like 2H tantalum disulfide or tantalum diselenide or niobium diselenide, the charge density wave shows up as a kink in the R versus T measurements. We will discuss the experimental signatures of charge density waves in the next video. As you can see, there are numerous 2D materials which host the charge density wave state, but a complete general theory to explain the charge density waves in 1, 2, and 3D is still missing. However, this is an actively ongoing area of research with several different pictures proposed, including the partial nesting vectors, excitons, electron-phonon interaction, exciton-phonon interaction, metal insulator transition, and asymmetric filling of the unit cell. Although the theoretical understanding is not complete, 2D charge density wave is still an interesting playground for physicists to study many body physics. These are some of the phenomena that I personally find interesting. In several materials, the charge density wave transition as well as the superconducting transition show strong layer dependence. In niobium diselenide, for example, the dependence to the number of layers seem to be opposite to each other. At low number of layers, charge density wave transition temperature is enhanced while the superconducting transition is suppressed showing signatures of competition between the two phases. 2D materials in general are quite responsive to out-of-plane pressure thanks to their van der Waals nature. In tantalum disulfide, this pressure seems to kill charge density wave ordering, enhance metallicity, and induce the emergence of superconductivity. Electric field can also be applied to the same material to induce superconductivity in the material and mechanical strain seems to be a tuning parameter for the charge density wave transition. This is only a small subset of interesting phenomena that can be observed in systems with charge density wave. In the next part, we will go over some of the experimental signatures of charge density waves. 
Let's conclude the second part of this episode on the introduction to charge density waves. In this part, we looked at the Fermi surface nesting vector and how they break down in 2D. And in the next part, we will look at the experimental signatures of charge density waves in 2D. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.